Hey everyone, Chris Jarnett here for Card Player TV and for this edition of Strategy, we're going to talk about 7 card stud 8 or better. We cut up with Justin Smith, also known as Boosted J. He plays the highest staked horse cash games online, and first we asked him what the biggest difference is between playing 7 card stud 8 or better in a cash game and in a tournament. In a tournament, definitely a little bit tighter, um, almost never playing any kind of 8 low. Um, Again, not pushing smaller edges, um, making making more tricky plays. Usually, more so in tournaments, uh, as in any game, you're playing a little bit more straightforward because the players are a little lower than uh, a little lower skilled, less skilled than uh, I'm used to playing. So um, you just want to make more straightforward plays, not so much buffing, just really, really uh, sucking the value out of them. He also talks about how hand values differ in seven card stud eight or better tournaments. Um, again, that, that that really is dependent upon all the uh, on all the up cards and uh, position. Okay. Um, but generally, you want to stick to the hands where you have an ace and um, want to shy away from the small to mid pairs, like the fours, the fives, the sixes. You gotta be really careful with those, especially in tournaments. Okay. Um, you want more so like the powerhouse hands, you know, like the, the three small suited babies, like excellent starting hand, but you want to keep the pop ball to the um, That's pretty much it. You, you just want to play tighter, and uh, you know, the pots are probably going to be more multi way too because the opponents are going to be looser and less skilled. Mm -hmm. So you want to play more pots that um, are uh, more scoopable. So, like the ace, two, seven hands might not really be as playable in some certain spots, depending on the up cards and position, of course. Of course, remembering the up cards is very important, and he shares with us his strategy for remembering the cards in stud eight or better, as well as seven card stud high. Um, I sort of do. Um, it's not too complicated. In stud eight or better, I'm always looking for the low cards, any card eight or lower. Mm -hmm. I am remembering them from ace low to high, so there's Ace two two three seven out. I will remember that, and I just remember it just like that. Ace two three three seven, and for sud high, I would just remember all the cards. Usually nine or higher, I'll remember. And in the suits are more relevant in sud two, and usually I try to sneak a peek at my hand first, so I can kind of garner like what kind of cards I should be remembering uh, according to my hand, and also opponents' hands who might be playing the pot as well. So uh, if there's like a deuce or a three in stud high, I won't be really paying too much attention to their suits, but um, because they probably won't be really involved in the hand. So just gotta do, gotta be really quick, and you can't be too, uh, you can't be over observant. So that's probably not a good thing for other people to know that you're paying that much attention. We also asked about a specific situation in which you'd only be going for the high in stud eight or better, such as when you're rolled up. That's a very tricky uh, spot, and it actually somewhat depends on exactly which rolled up hand you have. Mm -hmm. But generally, with those hands inside air better, I actually like to kind of like lump in the pot because I want kind of like as many customers as possible. Because if I get a heads up, I'm going to win the pot sometimes when they break out, but it's going to be a smaller pot. Um, but if I get four or five way action, um, you know, you could have two or three guys going for low. One guy might make like, you know, some kind of queens up type hand and it will go all the way to the river. And, you know, you get half of a four way pop potentially all the way to the river. So um, that's why it's good when your head's up. You know, if they make a low and you have trips, I mean, you're just getting your money back. And also, I mean, you're potentially be scooped if they have a really good hand and they make a straight or a flush. So generally I just like to overlay of, uh, extra money in the pot. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Strategy on 7 Card Stud 8 or Better. I'm Chris Tiernet for Card Player TV.